Get out to the first fire of the season. Get ready, because we're about to light one up. February 19th, Bluebird Day, so we've had some snow and rain, but I believe it's dry enough that we can get a fire going. We're gonna start with a smaller fire, 15 or so acres. It was burned last year after a bunch of cedars were cut. So there's a bunch of cedar skeletons in there. I don't think this fire, unfortunately, is gonna get hot enough to consume a lot of that, but my objectives today is remove or at least set back a bunch of hardwood saplings. When we removed all those cedars and a little bit more sunlight got to the forest floor, of course, hardwood saplings are gonna come on. And I'd rather my deer eat forbs. Forbs are much, much higher quality forage and can provide good cover too. A lot of people say native grasses forbs don't stand to winter and that may be true if you're getting a lot of snow. We don't get feet of snow here. Most people don't, you know, if you're south of I-70 or I-80. So anyway, our objectives today is get this hot enough to set back hardwood saplings. We gotta get it hot enough to girdle that stem. Maybe new saplings coming up around where we killed that stem. And the roots are gonna be feeding really high amounts of nutrients, minerals to that. MSU calls that, Mississippi State University calls that a mineral stump. Right now, I don't want those saplings getting eight, 10, 12 feet tall. So we're gonna try to set them back. Of course, remove that leaf litter and fire helps stimulate the germination of a lot of native grasses and forbs. So that's our goal today. I'm gonna strike a match over here and see if it'll carry. I felt some leaves are crunchy, I think it will. It'd be spotty, but we have a lot of burning to do at the Proving Grounds 2 this spring. If we don't start now, it's gonna get too late in the spring to burn. So we're gonna knock a small one out. Come on along, let us show you the techniques we use to manage the property. We get a lot of questions. This is a drip torch. It's made to drip fuel on this sponge. The sponge is supposed to hold enough fuel to keep lit. So when you got it turned up and fuel's not coming out spout, it'll still burn off the sponge. It'll go out after a while. But when I turn it over, fuel will drip on this. We've got a, a new road that's made to Proving Grounds too. That's the northern on the north end of this unit. Our fire break, great big fire break. So don't have to worry about that. Not a lot of fuel right here to get it going. Once we get on down to the timber, it'd be a lot more leaf litter. So I'm just gonna see how it's gonna burn. I'm gonna light a little grass right here, tent to, and get my sponge soaked up. I'm just letting it dribble on the sponge. So that'll carry a fire. Get a little fuel out here. Let's talk about fuel a second. You don't want pure gasoline, that would be a bomb. People get injured or killed. Don't make that mistake. We want a majority of diesel 20 to 30 percent gas so it will ignite and carry my rule of thumb is never any more than 30 percent gas and we want to make sure it's mixed good you don't want to just pour it in you got a gas bomb sitting right on top so i've got some out i like these longer lighters barbecue lighters some people call them that way your face and right down on there might flare up and give you a different mustache let's see if this is going to carry it all oh yeah so that's just burning the fuel that i poured out also showing me wind direction and you learn a lot about how to hunt your property because it's spoke this is east over here so it's an east wind Oop, get my torch out of here blowing to the west it's when the man says it's a south wind today nothing about east in the forecast but it's just gonna swirl this is a small little spot now it's kind of going how it is while i got some flame i'm gonna get my torch lit You can see my sponge is carrying enough fuel that when I pour fuel over that flame, it ignites. And you see the big sticks here, they're not gonna burn up. The fire's not that hot. So I'm setting this back. And I can be pretty aggressive because I got this big road here. It's not blowing across that. So I'm just gonna black out this corner because the humidity will drop during the day and the fire will be more volatile. So blacking out this corner here. You can see my sponge is still carrying fuel. I've seen guys walk around with little butane torches. My guys, that probably works good if you're burning your yard or a small spot, but if you're doing much habitat work, you want a drip torch. I think they're about $150. There's a 
a lot of places you can buy them online. You get in these bare patches of grass like this, like I am not gonna kill this. This is obviously a stump sprout. See all these sprouts coming up from one stump? There's not enough fuel around to kill that, unfortunately. I'm got there's a few leaves in there. I'm gonna set those leaves on fire just to see if maybe I can set back a little of those. But I got this bare stuff. We're going down here where there's more leaves and the fire will carry better. It doesn't have to be direct flame. Remember, it's heat. You're cooking the cell. So this tree's probably about dead from a really hot fire with all this fuel here. It's top dead, but you can see all the sprouts coming around the bottom. So the last fire, when we cut all these cedars, had all this fuel right here, killed this little scraggly oak. I'm okay with that, but it didn't root kill it. That's what we're talking about. See all these sprouts coming out. There's, I don't know, 50 sprouts. I'm gonna see if I can set some of those back now. A drip torch has this little brass screw right here. You can open or shut it. That's the amount of air going in there to control how fast your fuel goes out. I don't want to waste fuel for a couple reasons. A, I don't have to walk back to the buggy and get more fuel. And B, you know, this is diesel gas. It's toxic. I don't want to be pouring any more on the ground than I have to. It's kind of like herbicide. It's a tool I want to use, but I don't want to use any more than I have to. So this is just a little demo. It's going real slow. I'm going to pick it up here a little bit, see what we can do. When you're putting your torch out, the easiest way I do is just hold it up. You don't want to be blowing down on the heat. You want to be blowing it. You want it away from your body. So I get up here and just go and blow it out. You don't want to put it below you and blow because you notice the first blow I didn't get it and it flare back up and again might reshape your beard a little bit so blow it out I treat my torch like a loaded gun I only point it it's unloaded right now I only point the torch where I want flame to go because it gets hot it may shoot out a little bit of flame and you can shoot it across your fire line I normally don't wear glasses. If you watch Going Deer, you see I don't wear glasses when I'm talking to the camera. A lot of people see my eyes, but I wear them on a fire to keep the smoke from getting my eyes. Smoke is what really hurts you. You're rarely on this. There's none of fuel here that, you know, you're going to burn yourself. We have our Nomax on, probably not necessary today. But that smoke getting in your lung and eyes can really zap your energy and pull you down. So I'm going to keep the smoke on my eyes, and I'm going to position myself where I'm not breathing a lot of smoke. And I see a, a locust or a grasshopper going upside a tree over here. And when you burn, it stirs up a bunch of insects and turkeys will be in here. We had a, a guy, a friend of ours, friend of growing deer, Randy. Randy just sent me some pictures. Did his first burn this weekend. He rarely sees turkeys on his property and there were turkeys in the burn the next day. There'd be turkeys in here this afternoon or tomorrow. just lift this line right here I about lit where you see the backfire and you can see it's spreading faster it's gaining more ground with the wind pushing it than it's backing in this is a really good example on a real small scale of the difference between the head fire you can actually tell and I don't know if it's going to show up but the flame leaf is a little bit longer on the head fire or this side of the fire than back here because this is a backing fire. The fuel is the same. We're two feet apart. Now you see the wind just shifted. That's a deer hunter's nightmare, right? Now our flames are reaching this way. And this side is actually going a little bit faster. Our smoke is now going this way. It's coming out of the northwest. And these little swirling winds, we're respirating all the time. We're putting scent out all the time. No matter what you're wearing, doing, you're putting scent out all the time because you're respirating. And these swirling winds carry our scent around. That sticks on vegetation, deer comes by, you know, not even then, minutes later, it can still bust us. So swirling winds are the nemesis of deer hunters, and they don't make it real easy to fire. This, this is a very safe, very low fuel level burn, but it's now it's back. Look, it's going this way again now. Within a few sentences, the wind totally changed directions. And you can tell that head fire, now these flame heights here, it's very low on the backside towards the camera. 
and the front side, the flame height is taller and that fire is moving faster. Grant and I have broken up. He's on the east side. I'm kind of going over to this west side. A lot more leaf litter on my side and leaves are burning very well. Grant's side's kind of spotty because there was a lot more cedar tops in there and so it's, it's patchy. But I have a lot more leaf litter and it's carrying real well in the leaves today. But I'm, what I'm really having to watch is this wind. You know, just like Grant was talking about, it was forecast to have a south wind, but seeing a lot of the southeast with a lot of east in it, which is actually kind of pushing towards our western line. So I just have to be careful and watch this. I may have to get up ahead of it a little bit and light down the western line so it can back into the unit so that wind doesn't push the fire into our fire line before it's black. We want to have a good black line um, around the side and we work it real slow so we don't have a big fire hit our line because that, that could easily jump. Because what happens is you have that fuel right there and you know, that wind's pushing. You know, we're competing for oxygen with that fire. There's a lot of things that can go on. So just really watching this, a little technical on this corner, but uh, it's going well. And we'll keep you posted as we uh, keep on lighting and see what we find. Fire's going well, just going nice and slow, letting it back down this slope. Got a really good break here, letting it back down. And you know, the flame height's not getting too tall. We're not damaging trees, so this is going very well. But uh, you know, this, this little corner here is, is part of our fire unit, if you will. But you can tell, there's a lot of hardwoods in here and not a sun, lot of sunlight getting to the ground like we did up where Grant's light and where we had a lot more cedars. Now this, this area, we're not gonna get a lot of habitat response here. We're, we're that closed canopy forest and a lot of folks are asking, you know, you know, should I burn this time of year? Well, it goes back to what's your goal of that burn. Right now in those hardwood timbers, if you guys still have a closed canopy forest, you're just removing leaf litter. You're not making habitat. So a burn like this, if this was your entire burn area, this isn't gonna make habitat. We have to get sunlight to the ground. So when we remove the leaf litter or the other vegetation, that sunlight hits the ground and stuff can grow up. This area, it's not gonna change much, but it is part of our fire unit using the interior road and the terrain and whatnot. So this is a really good area for us to quickly black out, get a good black line in this area so we can focus on really good habitat deeper into the unit. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, PH Outdoors, Moultrie Mobile, Steel, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blocks. Little stump sprouts, see all the stems coming up, it's been browsed on. There may, these are so small, there may be enough fuel right here to set those back. They've gotten big enough now, they're not to a stage they're very palatable to deer. There may be enough fuel in here to set that back. And that's what we're after, that's our objective. Got some cloud cover, which the weatherman did not really call for. Cloud cover will slow a fire down. It's amazing how it blankets the fire. Just, it's just creeping now. That's your blow over. I don't care if this old log burns up. You can't push over. This is perfect example people talked about oh don't hack and squirt you can't walk in there next year be dangerous this tree's been dead i mean the top's rotted out i don't know five ten years been dead a long time i can't budge this so but i don't want to have to cut it down if it would catch on fire we're pretty far in the unit but there's a small chance a wind got up unexpectedly it could go a spark blow a spark across our fire line and that would be a wildfire a fire burning out of where we had prescribed to burn. So 
when I come across here, so I just take my boot, break the fuel back. Just make, you know, reach out and get a fire break all the way around it. Don't have to worry about this thing catching on fire. My torch went out, and so I use my lighter. I'm going to walk back here, be quicker. Fire is barely carrying today, so when it's barely carrying, you can light bigger chunks. Looking back up through here, it's really spotty. Well, I checked a little second ago, but it was 28% humidity. 28%. The fire is barely creeping. And this is a real lesson in what cloud cover does. It's spotty high clouds, but it's enough to blanket the area. The leaves are crispy dry. You swing this, get more air over it. This is a Kestrel. No magic to the brand. You can see it's 27, 26% humidity. This baby ought to be cooking. And it's creeping. And my mission was to kill a bunch of saplings. Not sure we're going to accomplish our mission. We're too far into it to put it out and wait for another day. And we have a bunch of acres to cover this spring. Uh, so I really can't just say, oh, you know, forget it because there's only a certain amount of days. So just a lesson again, reminder to me, fire is not an exact science. You do what you can to meet your objectives. Fire is a tool. It's a long-term tool. Burning this once, get a little green up, that's one time and not what we want. But you can look out here, you know, flame height of three, six inches, it'll flare up to a foot every now and then. It's probably not accomplishing our mission except bearing the ground, taking away some tick habitat, and making it easier for those native seeds in the soil, the grasses, and for to grow. Do what you can, hope the next one's better, and don't let this discourage you from using this tool because prescribed fire Tim, is a critical right. tool. Or we pretty much black in through there. We leave our radios on in case someone needs something. You can't count on cell phones out here. You know, may not hear it, may not reach it. I want that radio right on my chest where I just got to hit the button and talk. We've talked some about just the conditions. Little lower intensity fire, but you see right behind me, we've got pretty heavy fuel load. There's some cedars that were not consumed very much during the last fire. Heavy fuel load, fine fuel, those cedar tops. We've got some big fire. Now we've got a good black line all around us. So, I mean, these, these flames are 30 foot high. It doesn't show, doesn't look like that on camera right now, but you know, remember conditions can change quickly. That fuel load can change quickly. If that fire gets into you know, a different fuel type. So, you know, we were prepared for this, but don't get psyched out thinking, man, that fire's not carrying and you get ahead of yourself or bite off more than you can chew. Always be ready, because it's, remember, it's fire. It's not a controlled fire, it's prescribed fire. And we we're prepared for this, and this is doing exactly what we wanted. But in other areas, that fire's not getting quite as intense, but, it's going really well. I'm touching up. You know, this fire's ripping through some of these areas. More sunlight to the ground. You can see there's some gaps right here. So a little drier, not holding as much humidity, even on this cloudy day. That fire behavior's changing a little bit. So gonna see what this does. Sit tight, see what it does. And then once it lays back down, may go over, light a few more piles and keep this going. But we're just going on and touching up here it's looking really good clouds have moved in but grass is one of the finest fuels obviously so i'm going to sell a little head fire you see it carry up through here pretty good and slow down when it hits the leaves because they're not as high a quality of fine fuel. So just fill my dip torch up, get lit here, turn my vent down. You watch it flame up, then hit those leaves. 
because they're not as high a quality of fine fuel to slow down. So you can tell the wind is pushing it. We're gaining, you know, an inch a second or something. I don't know. You can tell it's, you know, it's walking. It's moving on. We're watching go hit these leaves up here in a few yards. The back side just barely, you know, the back of this flame is three, four inches tall. The front's a foot or more. That will set back. There's a ton of little hardwood saplings in there. Not sure it's showing up on camera. That will absolutely set those back. I can feel the heat from here. We're doing some good. Hardwoods are primarily post oaks. Post oaks are native to dry areas. They're very fire resistant. They, you know, they were made to burn dry grassy areas, Oklahoma, this part of Ozark, whatever, eastern Oklahoma. It's gonna hit that leaf litter, and I'm predicting it's gonna lay down a good. It'll flare up every now and then, but it's gonna lay down a good bit. So you can tell how fast that walked up there. This line, you know, if you focus on this grass right here, or any of these grass, you see how long it takes to get there. Versus how that's walking. In the short time we've been talking, that's moved several feet. And heat's going in front of that. It's preheating fuel. You can see my smoke up there 40, 50 yards, may not show on camera. Uh, to where I've already burned inside. There's black in there, it's not going anywhere. So, starting to lay down a little bit because it's picking up a higher leaf content and less grass. So the finer the fuel, the more ignitable it is. And you can tell it's getting more leaves and laying on down. Daniel's coming behind us and he just lit a head fire. So you can turn around Cole, because it looks good. Looks really good. Just came around the south line, rounded the corner of southeast corner. We're going to let it get up in here, see what it does. Then I may have to jump inside and, and light some little mini head fires to keep it going. But we're really pushing the conditions this afternoon, so we got to try to get this done before we start getting cloudy. Humidity starts rising and maybe even some showers moving in. So we're just going to keep going hard and see how well it does. We'll keep you posted. Just mopping up this first fire of the year here, 2024 to Proving Grounds 2. Wasn't a great burn. I'm not sure we achieved all my objectives. We removed some leaf litter to reduce tick issue. Remember, all populations go up or down, primarily based on habitat quality, unless there's external harvesters. We're not spraying for ticks, so it's a habitat-driven thing. Ticks desiccate easily, so by removing that leaf litter, there's not a layer to cover them from the sun's energy for a while anyway, and they can desiccate and die. Not all of them will, unfortunately. And then we want to set back hardwood saplings. I'm talking small stump sprouts. It's not going to, this fire wasn't an intensity to kill something like, you know, an inch or three quarters of an inch or larger. Got hot enough to do that in some areas, some areas that didn't. Overall, you know, it's our first burn of the year and we have a lot, nine or ten fires scheduled for this year. So to get it done before spring green up, we got to start now mid-February and jump on days when we think they're good conditions. Weatherman didn't get this one right. Hopefully the next one will be better. Hope you learned something from this. And more importantly, I hope whatever you're doing, you get to get outside and enjoy creation. But the most important thing we all can do is take time every day to be intentional, seek God's will, and apply it to our lives. Thanks for watching. Growing Deer.